We welcome you today to Miracle Christian Centre International Church and Ministries. My name is Bishop Keith McLeod and today we are going to continue our second part of the study concerning breaking the dream codes. We are talking about dreams and according to scripture the Lord Jesus gives us an indication in a code by saying in Matthew 13 verse 24 and 25. It says these words, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field, but while men slept his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. This scripture is a very powerful code and, if, and Jesus is speaking to us in a parable, which of course is a, it has a, a, a hidden meaning. So he's showing us that when people go to sleep at night, when they wake up in the morning, it's at that time where something negative can happen. And we found by experience, and what I shared in the last program, uh, historically, the Lord has shown us that many people are attacked in their dreams and many Christians particularly are suffering as a result. So my challenge today and the purpose of this program is to go through some of these dreams and to declare them null and void and to teach you how and what to do when you wake up in the morning or if you wake up in the afternoon, you've had a bad dream, there's some things that you need to do. Uh, in the last program, we explained that what is now termed a reality dream, that means you were really there. If you dream between 12 midnight at night through to, to 3 a.m. in the morning, and you find yourself in a tussle or fight or battle, or something's chasing you, or you're getting bitten, or something like that in your dream, that is a reality dream, it's actually happening to you. And so it's urgent need for you when you wake up, that certain types of prayers are made. If not, if, you are, if that thing still bothers you, whatever is created, sometimes you have to find a minister, a preacher, or someone who's able to break the power of that dream over you, that negative dream. Secondly, if you dream uh, between three o'clock in the morning through to six and you have a dream concerning your life about you, that dream is called a program dream. That means that whatever you're seeing in that dream, a program has been made. Just like how you would record, you may go out in the day and you record a program on your recorder, on your TV. And what you do, you go back home later and you watch it, don't you? And you can see what the, all the scenes are all about. It's the same way that the demonic world, they program people by them having a negative dream about themselves, their family, their home, their business, about their very bodies. And whatever they see in that dream, they wake up and lo and behold, throughout the course of the day or the next day, that dream comes to pass. And so we're here as code breakers. The Lord broke the code and he told us what to do in Matthew 13, 24 and 25. And we're going to exercise some of this today. But my purpose, the, Lord, the purpose the Lord's given me today is to just go through some of these dreams and hopefully it will strike, out, strike the area that's affecting you. Remember, we are ministry reaching out to all people. So remember this, my friends that Jesus loves us most of all, for he's our saviour. So I'm going to take you through some of these dreams. And what we found is that the devil's kingdom tends to use animals. He uses animal forms, particularly that we like and that are friendly to us. So when we see that animal in a dream, we tend not to be afraid of it. We just, you know, encourage that thing we're seeing in the dream and we're not resisting it. But we need to learn to resist practically everything we see in a dream because what it means is the demonic world is code is something against you and you're going to have one of these tears and weeds in your life and your good seed is not going to come forth as a great harvest. Uh, so we started off last time by saying if you see 
in a dream a crab. It actually means that your life is now going to become disorderly. You're, you're not going to walk forward anymore. Like crabs do, they walk, they walk sideways. You are going to avoid issues. You've been assertive all your life, very strong decision maker. But all of a sudden, your confidence is gone because you saw a crab in your dream. Some people see tortoises in their dream. Tortoises hibernate. They are slow in progress. It means to slow down your progress. And again, where you're supposed to come out and be yourself, you lock yourself away. Sometimes not in a place, but just within yourself, and your confidence is gone. Uh, it also means uh, a tortoise can withdraw its head when it's under attack. And, or you find yourself withdrawing, see? And so if you see a tortoise in the dream, in the name of Jesus Christ, you're going to rise up against it and you're not going to go backwards and you're not going to withdraw in your life. A tortoise also carries a heavy load. If a tortoise is thrown over on its back, it will die. And that, that's telling us sometimes people see that type of imagery in their dream. It means that you cannot deliver yourself. Some people say I can do self-deliverance and that's true you can. Um, but sometimes we all need help. So if you see a tortoise uh, in a dream, it means that there's something heavier than you on your back. And it means that you can't turn yourself over back on your feet without someone else helping you. And that's very, very important. Now, sometimes people see pigs in their dreams. And that means, they, that means uncontrolled sexual perversion and sexual habits will come into that person's life. That person's innocent, they don't go around thinking or doing those types of things, but what the devil does, he sends the dream of a pig, and that person starts to have um, uncontrolled sexual habits, uh, and also the spirit of blackmail comes into their lives, which the, the pig naturally unearths the earth with its nose. So it's using that to unearth your life. So the spirit of blackmail, someone is plotting against you that when you see a pig. Someone's going to pull your name down. Someone's going to make your name a bad name in, in society. So we can rebuke that when we wake up in prayer and it will stop the power. Some people see probably man's best friend, which is a dog. Dogs are very friendly, wonderful animals. You know, we all love dogs, really. Most people do. The thing is about the dog, it is the only animal really that is very open sexually. A, a dog right here in this, where we are in God's sanctuary, in this building, in this church, right here if two dogs, male and female, came here, they would have no respect. Other animals like cats, they'll go away in different corners and do things, but not dogs. And so what happens when someone sees the spirit, spirit of the dog, a lot of sexual lust is coming into their life to destroy their lives. Some people see ants, and you know what, an ant is a fantastic uh, creation of God. They are builders, they make things wonderful, you know, wonderful um, colonies working together. So sometimes you can see ants and it could have a positive meaning that your life is getting really, you know, things are coming together. But the negative side of an ant is this, if you put a, a, a lump of sugar on the ground on your kitchen floor or on your mantelpiece, and if one ant finds that lump of sugar, they send the message back to the, the nest, and all of a sudden you'll see a whole troop of ants in one line, hundreds of them, each taking a little bit of that sugar. By the time you go back in half an hour to an hour's time, the, all the sugar's gone. So when you see ants in your dream, it means an organized force that is trying to enter your life to take things away from you. And so when you see an ants in your dream, it means that something is planning to take your goodness away, take your prosperity away, break and destroy your business and do these kinds of things. Uh, if you see a snake in your dreams, if you see snakes in your dreams, notice the snake and human beings, we are enemies. So most times people in their dreams will see snakes and what that will mean is in, this, in, the, in the dream they're, they're running from the snake or they're fighting the snake or they're afraid of the snake. And that means that uh, witchcraft is coming against that person. Uh, it could be an illness or any kind is coming against that person. However, if the snake and the person is friendly in the dream, that is a very serious dream. 
if the person seeing the snake becomes friends with the snake, hugging the snake, holding the snake, and they are friends, it normally means the person is actually possessed of the devil. And that's a very serious, that person cannot deliver themselves. They need to find someone who can set them free in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, some people see cats. A cat may jump into their lap in their dream. That just means witchcraft has entered the life of your family. It's entered the life of your particular surroundings. So in Jesus' name, again, we have to pray. Uh, someone sees a rat or mice or vermin going into their life. They just see a mouse or something like that. It's very serious because if you see a mouse or, or, or a rat in your dream, it means all your money is going to be taken away from you. If, if you allow, any of us allow natural rats and mice in our house and leave, leave them there for six months, you go away on holiday, come back, your house will be ruined. They will gnaw through everything, they will leave droppings everywhere, and they even breed in your house. And the whole house is, 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 is seriously in a very dangerous position. So basically, when you see rats, it means the spirit of poverty is coming into your life. You may be a businessman and businesswoman, but if you're seeing rats in your dream, you need to contact this ministry. And I'm saying this to all of you, contact us on the contact the, the name that's on the screens that are coming up, ring us quick. We'll pray with you at a distance and we'll pray with you personally. You can come to the ministry, uh, to our offices, and we will pray and deliver you in Jesus' name. Um, if you're having uh, a dream where you're eating food, now, you are not to eat food in your dream. It's very, very dangerous because... Why is that? Because we eat food in the day. Why do we have to have a dream to eat food? Have you noticed if you have uh, a dream that you're eating food, it's usually your favourite food, the things that you really like, and it appears on a banquet or you're sitting with a group of people and you're eating the food. Let me tell you something, you are not eating real food. What you're doing, and I'm going to be straight with you, and you're going to think I'm crazy, but I need to tell you, you're eating, things, you're eating things that are unmentionable. You're eating, you're eating snakes, you're eating human flesh, you're eating all kinds of feces that they're putting into your body and poison. But what they do in the spirit world, they dress it up like your favourite steak and kidney pie or your favourite you know, fish, your favourite lamb chop, your favourite burger and you're eating it away in a dream. That then puts sickness and disease in your body. And usually the sicknesses are the type of illnesses that the doctors cannot diagnose. And you keep going to the doctor and they said, you say, something's wrong with me, doctor. And you say, well, he says, I can't find anything. We've tested you, we've done this, we've sent you to the hospital, and but with all, all the results are negatives, but the pain is still in your body, you're still feeling fatigued, you're still feeling very ill indeed. But because you did not receive this illness in the natural, you got it in the spirit world through your dream. And so, please, this is very important. Call us quickly, call us today. We will pray for you in the name of Jesus and the power of God will set you free. Amen. So eating in a dream is not good at all. You may have dreams of fire that is in your house. If there's fire in your house, it means that today in the program, there's going to be confusion in your home. There's going to be quarreling and argument in your home. There's going to be fighting in your home. This is very important. If you find yourself swimming in the water, you're in the sea. If you're swimming uh, in, a, in, a, in a pond, if you're swimming in a lake, if you're diving deep into the sea and all of that, this is a very bad dream. You may think oh, you just love swimming, but the point with this particular dream, it means that you are connected to the marine spirits that are in that underworld. And it's very, very dangerous. And so you need prayer to deliver you from marine spirits in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You may have a dream where you're sitting in a vehicle. There are two types of dream when you're in a vehicle. 
uh, which is a car, it could, be a, it could be any kind of vehicle which you, have, you can control and be driven. But if you are only a passenger in that vehicle, in your dream, it means that you have no control about where you're going. Someone else is controlling you, someone else is driving you, someone is taking to a place you don't want to go, and it just means that we need to break the curse of that particular dream. No longer will this happen to you in Jesus' name. You may have a dream, however, where you are driving the vehicle yourself. Now that dream is different. That means you are in control of your life. It means that you are going to the places that you want to go, and that's a blessing on you. But if you are being driven by someone, it means someone else. And it, let me tell you something in this life, there is a saying, you can, you, you know, you can watch your enemies, but you, sometimes you've got to watch your friends even more. The people close to you, right under your nose, can be your deceiver. They can be the ones trying to destroy you. So be aware of that. But in the Jesus name, there is victory. Hallelujah. There's victory for all those who call on the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus will deliver us. The name of Jesus will deliver us. The angels of God, they deliver us. The word of God delivers us. There's so much power in God. The gifts of the Spirit deliver us. And so the love of God, most of all, delivers us. You may have a dream that you're losing your keys. Every time you keep losing your keys, that means you're losing your authority. A key is that which opens a door and shuts a door. Your power to open your own door, your power to shut your door is being taken away from you by dark forces. But in the name of Jesus, we are declaring that your authority is returning to you. Hallelujah. This is very important. People see dreams of their dead relatives. Now, that's a very difficult one in various cultures and society. But let me tell you the truth, what the Bible says. When someone dies, they are cut off from this world. They do not reconnect it through spiritualists and seances and things like that. Those are all deceptions. So if you have dreams of dead relatives, what it means is it, it's a curse that you will die before your time. They are calling you, the demons are coming in the form of your grandma, your, your auntie and these types of people who died before you. Then you see them talking to you in the dream. So you think you've seen auntie and so on. It isn't that at all. It is, the, it is to trap you and let you die before your time. So we have to break the spirit of necromancy. One of the things that God spoke against in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 12. And he says, none of these things are allowed in Israel. He says, anyone that commits these things will surely die. So this is one of the areas. So there's no such thing as a duppy or a ghost or a David Jones locker or a jumbie. Very, these are all the phrases of people seeing dead people. These, these are demons masquerading as familiar spirits to control the life of people and to take people's lives early. So in Jesus' name, we destroy those spirits. If you find that you, uh, there's cobwebs around you, you know, you're walking in your house or someplace and you don't see a cobweb, but you, you, you feel it and you have those in the dreams. It means a spiritual attack is coming on you to make you spiritually blind. They know that you can see, but it's coming to take your sight. And secondly, they are connecting with you in the spirit world so that they can detect when you're coming or going. Just like a spider's web when a fly gets caught in it, they, it, it disturbs the center, the epicenter of where the particular spider is. And so in the name of Jesus, we are disconnecting you from any power that is connecting you to their epicenter where they can curse your life. In Jesus' name, we break the power of your life now. Hallelujah. Uh, flying. If you see yourself flying, in the air. You're not in an aircraft, you're not on an airship, you're not in a hot air balloon, you're not, you know, you're not on a kite where you, or in a parachute where you're doing that physically, but you're flying in the air over terrain, over mountains, going to different countries. That means something in the spirit world 
has been set up to try and train you to be a wizard or a witch for you to astral project them and they're trying to take you into that world and so we have to destroy that in the spirit world it's very dangerous and so we have to stop this by the power of God if in your dream if you see that your hair has been taken out or your hair has been cut it means they're trying to take the glory of God from you but in the name of Jesus we are stating that your glory is being restored in Jesus name amen Amen. This is very important. And so sometimes there are some dreams where people, they are set back. A lot of dreams are there to stop us from moving forward in Jesus' name. Some people see themselves naked in a dream. That means disgrace is coming to you. It's just around the corner, just next week, next month. Disgrace is on the way. Some people see that they are smoking in the dream and when someone's smoking in the dream it means a strong temptation is coming back to pull you back into sin but in Jesus name we destroy that spirit in Jesus name amen and there are many many other dreams so let's just talk about what do you do when you wake up in the morning or you wake up after a dream what do you need to do don't do anything else except Get out of bed and go on your knees and begin to pray. Now when you pray, do not pray with fear. Pray with confidence that Jesus is going to destroy whatever you saw. If you saw yourself in the most horrific crash or the worst, you're in the middle of a ship that was sinking into the sea. Let me tell you something. God is your, our protector. God will protect us. But we only does it when we pray. So you need to go on your knees and you need to say words like this, that Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, this dream that I saw in the, in the spirit world, Father, I declare it cancelled by the blood of Jesus Christ now in Jesus' name. And when you do that, God will now activate angels to go on your behalf and untie whatever was agreed against you. Whatever has been agreed against you, that dream will be cancelled in Jesus' name. So whatever, remember, let's say this again, whatever you saw in the dream, don't leave it 24 hours. Don't leave it 48. We have people come to see us sometimes and we say, when did you have the dream? I had it last week. I said, when did the problem start? They said, three days later. And they said, well, where are we now? We're at the time of complete collapse and destruction of their family. But the wonderful thing about Jesus, we can still pray and he can turn things around. But many of the suffering would be avoided. So what you have to do when you have a negative dream, you pray in Jesus' name. You pray, you say these words every dream that I saw I now cancel it by the blood of Jesus now remember the blood of Jesus is the most powerful thing that lets the devil's kingdom flee amen and what you then have to do you say Lord I cover myself under the blood of Jesus Christ the blood of Jesus what it does for us is what it did for Moses when they put the blood on the lintel and on the doorpost of the houses the death angel came to hurt the firstborn. But when the death angel came, what happened? He saw the blood. And so the blood made them invisible. The blood, the x-ray eyes of the angel could not penetrate into that house because the blood was there. So what can we do? We've told you what to do um, in the after effect when things go wrong. So preventative is better than cure, really. We can get be proactive and so every night, get on your knees. Anoint yourself with oil before you sleep. Pray in Jesus' name and ask God's angels to protect you. Pray every day and say, Lord, before I, I go to bed, Lord, bless me, bless my children. And not put your hands on your children and bless them before they go to bed. This is so important. I've done this with my own family and I'm telling you, it saves us from a lot of difficulties. So in Jesus' name, we have been delivered. You have been delivered from all the powers of darkness. 
God is your healer and your deliverer. If you believe, the powers of darkness will leave you today. So please, as you just stretch your hand, I'm going to pray a prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, we release your glory. We release the word that you've shared with us today. I take authority over all sickness and disease, authority over all negative dreams, and we smash them by the blood of Jesus Christ. We command that the name of Jesus Christ is the power and the weapon in our hands to set the captives free. Father, today we thank you. Friends, my time is up. I want to again invite you. If you're looking for a church, you're looking for some way to just worship God, to give your life to Christ, come and see us at Miracle Christian Centre in Watford, Hertfordshire. The address is there on the screen right now. People are coming from various places, from Surrey, from Milton Keynes, from London, and they're all members of this church. They're coming from East London, South London, uh, from High Wycombe, Buckinghamshire. People are coming from Aylesbury. Come and give your life to Jesus Christ. He loves you so much. And while we're here, let's have a prayer for those who need to receive Jesus as Lord. Say these words with me. My Lord Jesus, today I accept you as Saviour of my life. Come into my heart. I receive your salvation. I receive Jesus as my Lord and Saviour. Forgive me of my sins and take all my sins away. Write my name in heaven. Oh Jesus, you are now my Saviour and I am now going to your kingdom. I receive you as Lord and Christ in my life. Amen. Don't forget, each week we'll talk about this wonderful oil, winner's oil. Buy some as other people are currently doing. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. You know, only God can do these miracles. And we serve a miracle working God. He is the only God. A more excellent way is the way that we are now following. Amen.